the deep ocean. It is the largest ecosystem on the planet, yet it remains largely unexplored. The more we unravel its mysteries, the more we discover how unique this alien world truly is. Far from a simple barren plain, the deep sea is home to complex habitats and life forms that defy imagination. But this silent world is far from safe. Having depleted fish stocks in shallow waters, Industrial fishing fleets are now extending their nets into the deep. Trawlers lower nets the size of football fields into the water. Weighed down by huge steel doors and with large rollers at the front, they are dragged across the ocean floor. These trawls turn ancient habitats into wasteland. So as the trawls are uh dragged along the seabed, they basically uh, crush and destroy marine life that's living attached to the seabed. Um, you could liken it to clear-cutting uh, rainforest to get at the small animals actually living amongst the trees. So um, it's an, an enormously destructive way to fish. In these cold and dark waters of the deep, life progresses at a different pace. These coral reefs have taken thousands of years to form. They are stable, yet fragile environments, unaccustomed to disturbance. Some of the fish living here are up to 200 years old. Their populations, as well as the habitats on which they depend, can be wiped out by the single pass of a trawl net. The bottom line is we're dealing with very fragile, uh, very rich, very unique ecosystems, and ecosystems of which we know very little, uh, and they're being destroyed by deep sea fishing without a full understanding of, of what's even there to begin with, much less what the impact is. What this means is that uh, fishing fleets effectively are mining many of these resources. And in fact, our observations have shown very little evidence of any sort of recovery of these ecosystems. Often all you see is just bare rock left behind. Within less than a decade, we could completely exhaust deep sea fish stocks and destroy the unique habitats in which they live. And because many deep sea environments exist on the high seas, it is up to the international community to take urgent action. In 2006, environmental organizations, scientists, and some politicians called for a global moratorium on bottom trawling in international waters to be established through the United Nations. Among them were the delegates of Brazil and the Pacific Island state of Palau. Uh, the oceans have a major role in uh, enabling our life on the planet. Biodiversity in areas beyond national jurisdiction is the heritage of mankind. So it's in the interest of my country and all countries in the world that this uh, wealth of life not be destroyed. The Republic of Palau is based upon uh, the, uh, its relationship to the oceans. We uh, came together as the Pacific small island states to fight for a moratorium on bottom trawling. We gave up on a moratorium when the international community asked for time. Uh, uh, and that time is now running out. As a compromise to the proposed moratorium, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution which included a range of measures to protect deep sea habitats from the impacts of trawling. Briefly, there are four components to the GA resolution. One is that states will conduct environmental impact assessments of bottom fisheries on the high seas. 
Number two, they will close areas where vulnerable marine ecosystems are known or likely to occur unless they can be sure that they will have a minimal impact by allowing fishing in those areas. Number three, they will ensure the long-term sustainability of deep sea fish stocks. And number four, when all else fails, they will establish a move-on rule. This is a rule that will basically require vessels to move out of an area where they accidentally or incidentally bring up corals or sponges or other types of uh, deep sea uh, vulnerable habitat forming species in the nets or on the fishing gear. On paper, Resolution 61105 seemed to provide good news for deep sea protection, and some progress has indeed been made since its conception. But overall, the implementation of the new regulations has fallen well short of the resolution's promises. In some areas, the destruction continues unabated while the clock is ticking down on the priceless biodiversity of the deep sea. Well, the obvious implications of the slow progress in the implementation of the resolution to date, and again, in no progress in some areas, is that deep sea ecosystems continue to be destroyed uh, by bottom fishing on the high seas. And that has to stop. The, the, the economic dimension of the problem is not huge. This can be dealt with. Uh, if the international community cannot come together to either dis stop the fishing or ensure that it's sustainable, um, I wonder how we're going to tackle some of the larger ecological problems facing the world. We have to ask ourselves, how much do we value uh, marine ecosystems, and in fact, ecosystems in general? So seeing this procrastination, if you like, or, or, the, or the, the very slow progress of implementation of, of, of this UN resolution is, is not only very frustrating, but it's also very worrying in a much broader context. I think what, what's going to be needed to protect vulnerable areas on the high seas is a moratorium on bottom trolling. It doesn't matter if you're landlocked, and it doesn't matter if you're not a coastal state, and it doesn't matter if you're not uh, fishing. You know, what matters is we all have the same obligation. There are 192 countries, and every country has the same duty to future generations uh, to protect these areas. Uh, once they're gone, they won't be there anymore. As technology enables us to probe further into the secrets of the deep, we are only just beginning to understand the vast importance of this ecosystem for planet Earth. Safeguarding the future of the oceans is vital to the health of our planet, on which we all depend. Time has run out. Governments must take responsibility now to stop the destruction of the deep sea. <laughs>